So before we get going and before we get into any of the fun stuff, any of the fun parts of linear algebra, I want to go over just a little bit of terminology so that we're all on the same page with the language we're using. In linear algebra, definitions are extremely important, and it's important that you understand what I'm saying when I'm using these symbols. So you've probably seen a lot of these in other classes, but in case you haven't, it'll be a good review. So these are the symbols that I'm going to define right now, just a set of um, symbols, and you've probably seen a lot of these before. So this script R up here stands for the set of all real numbers. And this could be anything from one to two, so integers would be a subset of this, to numbers like 1.7, or rational numbers such as four divided by three, um, to even irrational numbers such as pi. C, this bold C, stands for the set of all complex numbers. So this would be numbers like one plus two J and pi plus j times 7. Um, so this would have a real part and a complex part. Moving on, Rn stands for the set of all vectors that contain n elements. And these elements have real entries. So the way I say it is the set of all length n vectors of real numbers. And this can, is basically a list of n numbers, and each of them can be a real number. And you'll see this pop up a lot. Um, and there are special properties of these, this, these vectors. It's important to note, and I'll go into this later, but R1 is not the same as R. R1 is a vector, R is what we would call a scalar, and the same goes for C and, and C1. So Cn is, just like Rn, the set of all length n vectors with complex entries. So I'll go ahead and write that. So when we talk about Rm by n, this is a set this is a matrix, and I'll go into more details about this in a bit, but this would be the set of all matrices with m rows and n columns. And this can get a little bit confusing that the m is first, but that actually describes the number of columns, which is like kind of vertical. So it's not like your x and y coordinates. It can be a little bit confusing. And these are actually vectors too, and I'll get into what a vector is in a bit, but I define this as a set of all matrices with m rows and n columns with real entries. And that's to be differentiated from uh, C m by n, which is the set of all matrices with m rows and n columns with complex entries. And actually, I'm going to take the time right now to adjust my definition of Rn to just to be consistent, to be the set of all length n vectors with real entries. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then, of course, Cn is the set of all matrices with m rows and m columns with complex entries. Now, these last three are symbols you've probably seen before. Um, this backwards E is means there exists. So in order for this to hold, there just needs to be one example. It doesn't need to hold for all. So for instance, you can see a bunch of ducks, and if all the ducks you see are white, and then there's one black one, you can say there exists a duck such that the duck's color is black. So basically, it's just telling you there's at least one and no upper bound on how many there could be. Uh, this upside down A, on the other hand, stands for all. So this would mean that it would have to hold for every single element of the set. So for instance, if I say, for all ducks, there exists two feet on the duck, then that would mean that all ducks have two feet. Now, of course, I'm sure there are du there's a duck out there with one leg. So generally, these things occur much more often in mathematical definitions than they do in real life. I mean, after all, what is the essence of a duck? But for now, um, these two symbols, and, and you'll see them being used a lot, basically are just qualifiers for at least one existing and then it, um, holding for everything. And actually, you'll see these even more. You'll see, for instance, this E with a slash through it, meaning there does not exist. Um, and that's just kind of a common notation, too, which means that if there does not exist, that means this property holds for nothing, which is kind of like the opposite of for all. Um, and finally, this E on the bottom means element of. So if I say 1.2 is an element of R, that's basically saying 1.2 is a real number. Um, there's also this element of with a cross through it. So if I say one plus two j is not an element of R, this is because one plus two j is a complex number and it is not in the set of all real numbers. Um, so now that we've gotten this out of the way, we can continue on with all the fun stuff in linear algebra. All right, see you guys next time.